A hearty welcome to the dear darling students of Sri Gokulam Public School. This is Nida Ma'am with you and we are moving into yet another English online class. In today's class, we are going to learn a lesson from your Hornbill textbook. The name of the lesson is The Landscape of the Soul. The Landscape of the Soul is written by Nathalie Truveroy and she is a Belgian art historian. She is also the wife of the Belgian president to India. She has visited many places around the world and she is known for imbibing the cultures of the cities that she has visited. She came into limelight after translating the book City of Jinns. In this lesson too, she is describing about the Chinese art form and the European art form and she would like to bring about a contrast between these two art forms. To explain her concept, she also takes the help of various stories and anecdotes available through the culture and traditions. Now let us get into the lesson. The lesson begins with a fable or an anecdote from China. Okay, This is not a true story but this is a, an anecdote or a fable that is being told in China. And through this story she would like us to understand what the Chinese art form or painting as such is. Now the story is about a painter named Wu Davosi. Okay, he was living in the 8th century and it is told that he was assigned to decorate the palace wall by the emperor of China, Xuanzang. It was Wu Davosi's last painting so he wanted to create a masterpiece. As he wanted only the emperor to see his masterpiece, he had hit the painting, that is the palace wall, with a big screen. Now, after the completion of the painting, the emperor was asked to come and view the painting, which was of a landscape or you can say a scenery. It had the mountains, the forest, the village areas, the flowers, everything was there. And the emperor was astonished by the beauty that he had created. There were also mountains and the painter asked the emperor to observe the cave at the end of the mountain. He said that the cave is the entrance to the inner soul. The emperor was very much surprised to hear the, the painter speak such things. At that moment, the, the painter clapped his hands and very magically on his painting, the cave entrance opened. Now the painter, without uttering a word, he walked into that painting, into the cave. And the painter, as well as the painting, vanished from the palace wall at that immediate moment. The emperor, who has watched all these with his own eyes, could not believe what he had seen, and it is told that the emperor became very astonished. Now, such so stories play an important part of China's classical education. There are many such stories of the Buddhist travelers and philosophers like Confucius and Xuanzi. These stories help to build the moral and the culture and, you know, create a kind of conduct for the children of China. Beyond their morality and guiding nature, they also reveal the spirit in which art is considered. 
Now the narrator wants us to contrast the story with a story from the European culture. This is from her own native place, Belgium. She mentions here it as my native Flanders, meaning it is from the Belgium. This story takes place in Antwerp. There was a master blacksmith in the 15th century by the name of Quentin Metis. Quentin Metis fell in love with the painter's daughter. Now he is a blacksmith and hence the father-in-law or the painter would not accept the relationship between Quentin Metis and his daughter. Also, Quentin Metis had expressed his desire to learn painting from this very established painter. That also was denied by the painter. So what did Quentin do? Quentin once sneaked into the painter's studio and on his panel, that is on the drawing board, he tried, he painted a fly, a house fly on his blank panel, he just drew a house fly. After that he left from that place and the painter came and saw that a fly was sitting on his panel. Now the painter thinking that it is a very original fly, he tried to swat it away. But the fly wouldn't move from its place because it is a painting. It was later only that the painter realized that it is not the original one but a painting. Such realistic was the fly on the panel. Now the painter was so impressed by Quentin's painting that he asked him to join as an apprentice. Later it is told that he got a chance to marry his beloved and also became one of the most famous painters of his age. Now in one story we are speaking about how the painter got vanished into the painting and in the other story we are discussing about how realistic the painting looked. This is exactly what the writer or the narrator wants to emphasize on. She says that while Chinese painting is about understanding your soul or spirit, European painting is about being realistic. Asia, the art gives an essence of inner life and spirit, which means that in, a in Asia, the paintings are more of spiritual nature. Okay, because there is a lot of spirituality in, in Asia and this is about awakening your inner senses. Whereas European painting is more about resembling and perfection of the outer world. So in simple words we can say that in Asia or in China the art form is basically about the inner body or your inner mind it is connecting your mind whereas in Europe it is about appealing to your outer senses. This is the basic difference between the Chinese art form and the European art form. Okay my dear children now with this we will conclude today's class. We will learn more about the difference of European and Chinese art form in our next class. Attempt your test papers and do take down your notes. Till we meet again in the next class. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.